Tiny Bones the Pickpocket has gone well over 150% from its previous price a couple days ago. Now you can get the card on TCG Player for about $42 before tax and free shipping. So about $45 before you could get this card in your hands. Um, a lot of people are speculating on it, obviously. That's why we're seeing a huge price increase from its previous. I believe it was somewhere around 15, maybe the 12 range. Um, so I wanted to go through Tiny Bones itself and I wanted to go through Ragavan, which this card is being compared to most closely, and I wanted to give my opinion on it, and I'll give it to you right away. I think I think this one might be a bad speculation, but hear me out, and always put your comments below if you disagree with me. Always want to hear about it. So, Tiny Bones. Let's read it. I'm just going to look straight off the internet so I could uh, so I could get the actual card. So, Tiny Bones the Pickpocket, Legendary Creature Skeleton Rogue, Mythic. Uh, one black, death touch one one, and whenever Tiny Bones the Pickpocket deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard, and mana of any type can be spent to cast it. Okay, seems like a very good card. Instead of Ragavan going from the, uh, the opponent's deck and getting a treasure, you're going right in their graveyard and casting something out of there. Very interesting. So let's read Ragavan before we get into the conversation. Ragavan Nimble Pilferer. I feel like I have to take my time <laughs> pronouncing that. Does anybody else have trouble with that? Uh, legendary creature, Monkey Pirate, Mythic. 2-1. Uh, Whenever Ragavan Nimble Pilferer deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile top card of that player's library. Until the end of the turn, you may cast that card. So you get to create a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's card. So a little bit of deck manipulation, that's not really why you play it. You play it for the ramp, and you play it to maybe get something good off the top. Um, so, let's dive into this. Let's have an actual conversation. Should Tiny Bones be as expensive as it is? Personally, I don't think so. Uh, personally, I think that it's just strictly worse. And I don't think anybody will disagree with me there, but I think the main point um, that people are speculating on is that it's not direct to modern. It's an actual like standard card. And I think people are thinking it's going to make some waves. Um, I don't know if I necessarily see it that way. Maybe I'm thinking about it too one dimensional. And I really do, if you guys play competitive magic, I don't play as competitively as I used to, so I'm a little bit out of the scene there. I just play, you know, more casually. Um, but in my mind, it feels like if I were to play Tiny Bones turn one, right? If I were to play turn one and I had to wait a whole turn for it to go around and I swing at my opponent, I have to pray that they have something in their graveyard that I could even cast. So really, it just feels like... Um, like a kind of like a like a worse graph digger's cage or or something like that. It feels like a or or maybe maybe a better comparison is a, is a scavenging ooze. You just kind of pick off a card in their graveyard, right? You do get to exile it, right? No, you may cast target. Not you may cast target. So it doesn't even exile it for you to cast it. It just kind of you you can cast it. So it just feels like. The effect seems strong. Don't get me wrong. The effect seems strong if you play it like turn three or four. But if you have this as your turn one play and you slap down your tiny bones and next turn you swing in for one damage with death touch and you hit absolutely nothing, it's a feels bad. Like it's it's a bad card, right? It's just a simply, a it's a typhoid rats, right? That's, that's how I see it. Now, Ragavan, <laughs> mind you, it went direct to modern, don't get me wrong. But this one exiles a card from the library. So the card's not coming back. You get to play it or it's gone, right? You get to create a treasure token. And is that... You actually get to create an untapped treasure token. Sorry, I don't play with Ragavan too often. So <clears throat> forgive me. Um, and, and then until, until the end of turn, you could obviously play that card. Now, it's not a non-land. You could play a land if you haven't played your land for turn, which is interesting. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it has dash. So if you had it late in game and you have an empty board and you just want to dash it out, haste it, get some extra value, put it back in your hand to save it, you could do that. It's so much more versatile. It gets around so many other things. When Tiny Bone just kind of sits there, and to be perfectly honest with you, not to use like an old uh, an old tired phrase, well, it dies to removal. Um, 
So does Ragavan, don't get me wrong. So does Ragavan. That's why people don't play it nearly as often because of uh, Orcish Bowmasters. And honestly, in, in modern formats, you'll never see Tiny Bones because of exactly that reason. It's just, it's just a strictly worse Ragavan. Now, I'm fully willing, like I said before, I'm fully willing to accept that I'm wrong about this because once again, I will say it, I'm not a competitive player. So if I'm not seeing some interaction um, or, or, or something that makes the card good, then I'm fully w willing to admit I'm wrong. But just looking at it compared to what people are already comparing it to, I didn't, I didn't compare it to Ragavan. People are, and I'm just, you know, talking about it in this video. You read the two cards and you can tell which one's better. Like it's not, it's not really close to be perfectly honest with you. The death touch, I guess is something, but, uh, but it's no haste, right? So it just feels a little, a little interesting. And now that everybody's gone, let's have an actual conversation here. Let's, let's really have a conversation about what happens when a good set comes out, like a really good power level, like everybody's happy with the set. We get this feeling of euphoria that, you know, and it makes, a, it makes people want to buy it. It makes us, I, I say us because I want to buy it too. I, like I'm really excited about this set. I don't, I don't think I have to say it, you know, <laughs> any, any more. I've been excited about this set for weeks, for months even. Um, and it just, it just seems at the moment that people are looking into these cards and they're trying to find comparisons and they're trying to, you know, try to get ahead of the market, which is great. And you always should take risks. And, you know, if you see something that other people don't and you take a risk and you win on it, it's great. And obviously, if you lose, it feels terrible. But at the end of the day, you should always, you know, take some sort of risk if you could handle it, right? Don't, you know, obviously don't throw all your money at something if you don't have the money to spend in the first place. But I totally understand what people are are getting at here. Don't get me wrong. So oh, the wife got home. But um, but this one seems a little odd. And I really don't get it, to be perfectly honest with you, other than the fact that it's in standard. It's a, it's a standard Ragavan. And, and it's, it's just powered down just a little bit um, to where it makes it, you know, kind of reasonable and standard. So I guess that's that's what I wanted to talk about today. Now, mind you, I don't want this to take away from anybody's positivity in the set. I just saw that, you know, Moxman's video, obviously, and I went on TCG Player and confirmed it. I'm like, wow, this card's selling like crazy. It just, it just didn't really click to me why that was because, well, if you're trying to find something that's comparable or better or, you know, just similar to Ragavan, I guess you found that. But it's not it's not better by any means. It's it's I think it's actually very much like a ton worse. So so yeah, I guess that's what I have to say about that. If you have a different opinion than me, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'd love to have a conversation about it. And mind you, I don't play competitive magic, so be be easy on me. But um, but that's just how I see it. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, like, dislike, comment, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, we're well on our way to 300. I really appreciate everybody for stopping by and supporting me in these videos. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday.